For the electrochemistry lab report form, I would like a few things. On page one, I would like the lab report form. Again, you can find this lab report form online. And one of the things I want you to note, we're going to very quickly go to that report form. You will see this is what it looks like. It's got a line for e-cell observed. So that's what you would write down from what was observed in the lab. You will then write the balanced equation, but only for the reactions that are spontaneous. So just the positive E cells. And so, of course, I've noted here spontaneous, that just means yes or no. So if they were negative, if the observed E cell was negative, it was non-spontaneous as written, meaning that how the leads were attached, whether they were on the anode or, elect or on the cathode, that negative indicates that they were not spontaneous. If, however, you had a positive E cell observed, then it was spontaneous. So in this last column where it says spontaneous, you just write Y for yes and N for no. For the balanced equations, though, I only want you to write out the balanced equations for those that are spontaneous. And for the E cell observed, you'll write all of your data within those blocks. Then in the next part where you have the table, you'll have your black lead. That's what's going to be noted in your lab notebook. And you'll follow that. And your red lead, you're going to write that down. E naught of the cell, we're going to talk about in a minute. You're going to write down the numbers that you use for that calculation, the value for Q, E cell observed, and then your calculated E cell. Now, the observed is what you note from your lab. And then the E cell is what you will calculate from the equations I'm about to show you. And then the last question that you see here, which half cell concentrations gave similar results? And then why might the other cells have exhibited larger discrepancies? I don't want you to answer that. So you can X that part out. The rest of it, I want you to do that. So going back to your lab report. So page one, we just went through the lab report form. Page two, I would like representative calculations. And sometimes there are two types of calculations. So E naught for standard conditions and E for non-standard conditions. And this refers to the Nernst equation. So for example, you can see here, I've written E naught cell is equal to E naught cathode minus E naught anode. That's used under standard conditions. You're gonna find out though, that that version of the cell is going to come into play when you use the Nernst equation. So here is the Nernst equation. There are two forms. You can see the first one, E cell, meaning non-standard, is equal to E naught cell, which is derived from the above equation, minus zero point, and that should be a zero right there, 25693 over N, which is the number of electrons, times the natural log of Q, where you have products of reactants. <clears throat> or you can use the second version, which is the logarithmic version. Either one will get you to the same answer. You're going to find out that for the lab report and for the lab data this week, that none of the cells that we ran were under standard conditions. So for all of those, you're going to be using one or the other of these two to calculate E cell. The other thing that you should note is up here. And that is the black lead was connected to what is known as the anode or anodic reaction. Now remember at the anode, oxidation occurs. And the red lead, therefore, is, is then connected to the cathode, the cathodic reaction, which is where the reduction occurs. And this was noted in your procedure for the lab. So if you read the preamble to this, it would tell you this and so forth. So coming back to the lab report. And then page three, you're only going to give me the carbon copy of the data only. So for this particular lab report, for those of you who are doing it in the spring of 2020, what I want you to note is online under the electrochemistry lab report information, so in Canvas, Chem 112, under the Pages tab where you will find this electrochemistry lab report information, in the box you will also see electrochemistrydata.pdf. 
I want you to use this data because in that data, I have specific boxes around the data that I want you to use. So look for those because one of them that was spontaneous, I actually don't want you to do the calculation on. I also want to warn you that your calculations could be wildly different than what you see in electrochemistry lab data. So your theoretical, your calculations from the actual information in your standard electrode potentials and so forth could be very different from the observed cells, um, essentially their electrode potential in the lab. And part of this is multiple reasons. Some of this is if you have a contaminated uh, bridge between the two, you might contaminate solutions easily. Uh, it could be that there's some oxidation on one of the electrodes, and so the connection wasn't good. And so there's various reasons why, the, why these could be different. But I want you to go to the electrochemistrydata.pdf. Those are the ones that I specifically want calculations for. Now, again, you just have to show me a representative calculation. And once you've done that, you don't have to show the rest. But I do want e-theoretical from the ones that I have boxed in, as well as the equations for those. So going back to this table <clears throat> in your lab report form. So for this, I want all of this noted, spontaneous yes or no. For the balanced equations, I only want those that I have blocked out. And then E-cell observed, you'll write that for all of them. And then down here, you'll give me the calculations for the ones that I have blocked in the pink box. All right, so that's what I want for my lab report. Now let's go on to looking at calculations. <clears throat> so for the first cell that you're going to do, I'm going to show you, this will look a little different. Go to this section. I'm going to go to the pages tab. On yours, you'll come across, you'll go down to electrochemistry lab report information, and here is the data. So you can see the pink box. We're gonna do the first calculation between aluminum nitrate and copper nitrate. Now remember, the nitrates are not gonna be participating in the redox. So they are considered um, spectator ions. So we're gonna use this information. Notice that the observed cell potential or voltage is 0.599 volts. And so the black lead was the aluminum that let me know that that's the anodic. The red lead is this copper. That's the cathodic reaction. So now we're going to go back to these, this area, and I'm going to make a note of that. <clears throat> so we've got our aluminum, and I'm just going to write, we have black lead. That refers to the anode. And we have copper, and that refers to the red lead or the cathode reaction. That kind of looks like an A, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, now what that means is that we have an anodic reaction that's an oxidation and a cathodic that should look like a reduction. In the anodic reaction, we should lose electrons. So I'm going to write this equation such that aluminum loses electrons. So one of the electrons is a solid, or one of the electrodes is a solid, I should say. And so it forms aluminum three plus, and we get this aluminum three plus from the fact that we had aluminum nitrate. So I'm gonna write that up here. So we had a piece of aluminum in our aluminum nitrate in that cell. <clears throat> Plus, we have to balance it based on charge, just like we learned in 111. Now, for the copper, we have to write it as a cathodic reaction or gaining electrons, reduction. So we would have copper 2 plus aqueous, and we get that because we know we have a copper lead in copper nitrate. If you look at your lab report information, your procedure. We have to balance the electrons, so two or the charge, so we add two electrons, and then we have copper solid. Now, to get the balanced equation, 
<clears throat> I've got to add these two together. So notice when I add them together, I want to make sure that my electrons cancel out. So I must go through, find the common denominator. It's going to be six. So I have to multiply this reaction by two and this reaction by three. So I would end up with two aluminum. I'm going to drop the phases just to help space and so forth. And then I have three copper two plus. And now they are truly ready to be added together. So when we add those two together, I'll end up with two aluminum solid, plus I go over and look at the other, three copper two plus aqueous yields two aluminum three plus aqueous plus three copper solid. And you'll notice the electrons are gone because I have six electrons on my product side and six on my reactant side. So they are gone. They cancel out. This is my balanced equation. And if you look at the information from the lab procedure, it tells us that we used 0 0.1 molar copper and 0 0.1 molar aluminum nitrate. <clears throat> So as a result, we are not under standard conditions. St standard conditions dictate that we're at one molar concentration. So because of that, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to calculate E cell, we have to use the Nernst equation. And you can use either one. I'm just going to use this one where it's the natural log. I'm going to write that out. <clears throat> and so when we look at this, we first have to calculate E naught cell. E naught cell is the cathode minus the anode. So we've got to find out those reduction potentials. In class, we used this standard electrode potential chart. Notice it came from 19.1, so your table you should look this table up in your textbook in chapter 19, has all the electrode potentials. So we've got to go to the cathode, <clears throat> excuse me, which is copper. So we're going to look up the copper one. Uh, I see copper plus an electron, but we know the one that has two electrons. <clears throat> so you can see it here, and it's 0.34. And so we can add in here 0. 3, 4, minus the anode, and the anode is the aluminum. So we come here to see if we can find the aluminum. And here is the aluminum right here. And it's negative 1.66. Because of the negative, we just plug it in like that. We don't have to do anything to it because we have this minus in front. We keep going. So minus 0 0.052563 divided by n, the number of electrons. So notice we have n number of electrons, and we had to balance the equation in order to figure out n. So we have 6 for both. That means that 6 were lost and 6 were gained. So we see a transfer of this electron, and so we end up with 6 below that fraction. And that's what n is equal to. And then we have the natural log of q. So for Q, we've got to look to our overall equation. Now notice for Q, we're going to look at the products. We have a solid here, so that would go in as 1. And then we have aluminum, 3 plus. It's got a molar coefficient of 2 in front, so it would be squared. All over the reactants, the aluminum solid wouldn't go into the Q equation because it's a solid. And then we have copper 2 plus, and it has a coefficient of 3 in front of it, so we'd put it cubed. So if we know, remember the concentrations given to us were 0.1 molar of each, so we'd have 0.1 molar of my aluminum squared all over 0.1 molar of my copper 
cubed. And then we do all of the math all the way through. So you would calculate and find your E cell. And I'm going to go ahead and actually show you what mine ends up being. So once you do the math, you come out with 1.99 volts. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is a theoretical. This is what we calculated in, <coughs> excuse me, in conditions that everything was perfect. No contamination, no oxidation on the electrode, complete connection, etc. What I want you to notice, though, is if you look at our data here, you will notice at our aluminum copper that what we observed was 0 0.599 volts. And so as a result, and we get 0 0.599 volts. And so you see there's a big difference between what we actually got in terms of the voltage for a cell observed versus what we're going to calculate. And I don't want you to be worried. Now, I've pre-selected these because for the ones that you calculated here for out, you will still be in the same ballpark, meaning they should all end up being positive, but you may see some different, you know, a slightly larger difference than what you're expected and seeing in your data. So to recap um, briefly for your lab report, page one lab report form went through all of that representative calculations. So I want to see how you get E naught and E and then a carbon copy of the data only for that page. And when I say I want to see what you get for E naught cell, that's where you're calculating it as part of the Nernst equation, which we just described here. You'll want to show me also how you got to this point. And here's my expectation. You cannot use the one I just went through as an example calculation. You must use a different one than the one I just used. So I expect for your lab report that the representative calculation would be any of the other cells that are in a pink block. I also want to remind you on this one, you will see some concentration cells. So for example, what I mean by that is you will see, for example, a black lead and for that black lead, you'll have 0 0.01 copper, 2 plus solution. And then on the red lead, you will see that we have attached on that one a copper 2 plus solution that is 0 0.1 molar. So because these are different concentrations, they still force the reaction or they essentially create a situation where the reaction will create or produce rather a cell voltage. Now notice, here's your black lead. So this one you'll write as an anodic reaction. And I'm just going to get you started to show you this. So again, it's going to be losing electrons. So you have your copper solid because just like you've set it up, you have your copper solid for your electrode and your copper nitrate in solution. Again, that nitrate is just a spectator ion. So you've got your copper 2 plus. So here's our anodic where we're losing electrons. We have copper 2 plus, and I'm going to be very specific and write 0 0.01 molar there plus um, two electrons. And you're going to do the same for the red lead, but remember that's going to be a cathodic reaction. So you're going to show it gaining electrons. Now notice this has a different concentration than this. So those won't cancel each other out. Your copper solids can cancel each other out because they're in the same phase. But because these two copper two plus here is 0 0.01 and the copper two plus here is 0.1, they won't cancel each other out even though they're in the same phase, because they are different concentrations. So that is what I would like for your lab report. And that's just some example calculations to get you started. Again, big reminder here, when you go to hand in your calculations, you are not going to be showing this one. It's got to be a different one. It can be a concentration cell. It can be any other one that's in a pink box, except for this one. All right, let me know if you all have any questions.